Oh, Hi, everyone. Welcome. Please come in. If you have any questions, throw them into the chat. So uh, just to have some basics, uh, we're, we're going to be talking to Elle Smith, fashion photography today. Hey, everybody. And, um, she's super amazing. She's one of my favorite people yeah. and favorite photographers. So it's perfect. And I think that it'd be super interesting to all of you designers that are out there because Lori has been in the fashion field for over 20 years and she started as a model. And uh, so first she was behind the camera and then she's in front of the camera and it's super important. First she was in front of the camera and then behind the camera. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's super important that she has that whole 360 degree view and a really full circle to, help you really understand some of the different aspects as a designer, what you want to pull out of your models, um, as a brand manager, what you really want to get out of your photo shoot. And we're going to be discussing all of this today. So I would love for you, if you have any questions as they come up, put them in the chat at the end in our Q&A. We will go through them in the order that they were received. And um, yeah, that's about it. So. I am gonna wait just one more minute and then we'll get started uh, with the presentation. And even these little uh, tidbits and kernels of gold, I call them, is super important for these students that are starting out that maybe haven't done a, a full scale photo shoot yet. Um, or just to talk about the different genres of fashion photography within the field and you know, one of the things that I thought was super interesting is that here we are in a two trillion dollar in two tri two trillion dollar industry. And there's so many different aspects as a designer and where you can go and um, styling and how it works together. And we just thought that you would be the absolute perfect person to present in this forum because you've been working with designers for so many years. Yeah. So, <laughs> right, so I am going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to share. And again, if you guys are having any issues, please put them in the chat. And Dominique is here and she's going to be fielding the chat as well. Hi, Dominique. Hope all is well. Mm -hmm. um, Hi. <laughs> so, Hi. Everyone, this is Elle Smith, Lori Smith, fashion photographer. Hi. This is a shoot that we were on. Lori, you're so <laughs> contagiously happy. So I, I just want to introduce you a little bit and uh, talk about a little bit of your background. So more than 20 years of experience on both sides of the camera as a former model and now a current photographer. She's graced the pages of Vogue in several different countries, right? Right. Um, Elle, Marie Claire, and Cosmopolitan. Um, first as a model, now as a prominent fashion photographer. Um, Lori, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about yourself and your history? Sure. Um, okay, I started uh, as, a, as a model uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, actually, I, when I was starting as a model, I was a fit model for a lot of LA designers, um, which was really cool. I was a uh, there were new designers. I was really like the muse and um, I would do fittings, I would say all the time, even like, you know, late at night fittings. The designers sometimes had money. Some of, some of them didn't. I didn't care. I was just kind of in it. I was, you know, loving fashion and a young model just wanting to just be involved. So I kind of started in Los Angeles like that and evolved and I went to New York and then I spent a lot of time in Europe. I lived there for six years and that's really where my career started. And I awesome. still, so yeah. I, that's, that's what I think is so interesting about your career is that you really understand the various different aspects of the fashion 
industry, both in front and behind the camera, but because you did all of those different things like fittings, right. and magazines and runway and flat lays and in studio and location shooting. I mean, these are all aspects that these designers are thinking about now as they move into their certification and they're creating their collection and they want to create a photo shoot that's really going to tell their story. And so I want to talk a little bit more about um, your experience as a fit model. Which right. You know. So, okay. So I moved to Paris and I was fit model, not only for Chanel, some other lines, but um, uh, the ending towards even, you know, uh, when I did a lot of the magazines afterwards, you know, Chanel and Karl Lagerfeld, that's, you know, just one of the designers I always loved, you know, from, from when I was a teenager. So it was actually the dream, like, to be asked to be the fit model. But at the time, I actually didn't want it. I didn't really want, <laughs> I had done so much. And then towards the end, I was, you know, he wanted me to, you know, actually be a house model and do all the fittings. But um, it was kind of stressful. That was a little bit stressful. Um, it was for, you know, for Chanel and Karl Lagerfeld was the designer, but there was many designers um, that designed on an outfit. Like there was um, the person that designed the collar, the person that designed the skirt. Um, and so when I was, um, you know, when I would come forward in an outfit, also, I, there was a lineup of all the designers that helped out on that outfit. So <laughs> Karl Lagerfeld would be with his fan and, you know, I would have to walk back and forth and he would critique the outfit and all the designers would talk about, you know, what they did and, you know, how it fit or why it didn't fit. And a lot of times they blame these designers, blamed it on me, <laughs> you know, like, oh, Lori is, you know, she's in small neck or she has, you know, <laughs> you know, broad shoulders. And so, you know, he would, you know, tweak these things. And then the next day they would come back with the finished product and I would do it again and again. But it was a great opportunity to, you know, work with Karl Lagerfeld and, you know, try on the accessories and everything, the whole aspect of you know his collection it was i now i look at the process i think That's it was amazing. You know, amazing but when i was doing it i didn't feel like it was amazing but now i look back <laughs> i think it was actually really amazing <laughs> yeah yeah i mean and, and that's what is so relevant about really understanding the psyche behind the scenes. And so that's what I think that a lot of our students, you know, haven't yet experienced. And the fact that you had that experience and you were so young and you probably, it, it, like you said, you didn't get how amazing that is now that you're right. like, Carl was with his fan. Right. I can imagine, like. And it, it was a dream. It was a dream of mine to work with Carl Lagerfeld and Chanel. But I guess when you're doing it, um, you're absorbing everything. The tension, you know, what goes into it, how important it is. You know, the collection is so important. The timing is so important. And it has to be absolutely perfect. So I think that you, you just, when you're around that, you get an eye for that you you get an eye for that detail and you expect it in what you do so i was definitely influenced um by the fashion that was around me and i loved it i loved it <laughs> i'm sure and what about galliano what's the difference how how would you look at being a fit model for chanel and then galliano yeah so that was around the same you know the same time and uh galliano and carl lager i feel very different, different designers. Um, Galliano was full of energy and just so much excitement. So when I went in to do that fitting um, and, you know, those fittings, uh, there was music. I was walking. I was all dressed up and they would just put on music and just let me walk with, I was basically draping chiffon or fabric walking back and forth and they were getting inspiration as they were making the dress so they were making the dress on me as i was walking back and forth 
and they were they put a hat on me or they um you know would let me walk with a purse or something like that and they would get inspired by me just walking back and forth very different from carl who yeah you i guess you did have to walk back and forth they got excited when they could see you in movement but um with john galliano i i was they were actually designing the dress on me as i was walking very different that is amazing. and there wasn't a lot of uh, people involved like with chanel there was a lot of, there was just just galliano <laughs> and maybe his partner i think yeah. but that was it wow um, really so you do you feel that yeah. having that background really trained your eye to to make sure that you pay attention to those details in absolutely it's um it trains your eye it um it's like a you know, like eating fine food, you know, you eat great food all the time. You have a trained palate <laughs> for fine food. You have a trained palate for fashion, you know, and your eye, you know, what is good and you know, what is just like, okay. <laughs> right. You know, um, so I think that, yeah, it definitely influenced me quite a lot. So then you moved on, or uh, were you doing it simultaneously and doing fashion modeling? And this is still in Europe, right? So yeah, still in Europe. Yeah, I was modeling, um, doing fit modeling, do the magazines, and actually that's where I started doing photography. I was uh, the model with the camera all the time, shooting behind the scenes of the shows. I wish I had stuff to show you of those shots. I just had a sure shot camera. And funny enough, a stylist was, um, I was always showing off my pictures behind the scenes. It was great for a model because you're behind the scenes, you're with models that are all dressed up, looking fabulous in the best clothes. So I was always shooting behind the scenes shots. And um, a stylist said, hey, wow, you have a great eye. You should really learn how to use a real camera. And that's, I took a photography course in Paris, learned with Americans, two American women, and that's when I started shooting uh, in Paris. And, um, and then I moved back to the States, but, uh, <laughs> but I, I, got, I took that with me, which was awesome. It's amazing. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, there's such an array of your background with your imagery and it's, it's so beautiful. And, and when you think about it, this is the nineties, right? The nineties. Nineties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is before, right now in our generation, they want these behind the scene images. So you are training exactly. for what you're gonna do today, all the way back then, in a right. sense, you know? And so that was in the 90s when we were shooting, um, we were shooting film, I guess, you know, that we can tap on um, too, but now you mm -hmm. change to uh, fashion shows and, <laughs> fashion and runway yeah well runway so we're thinking about fashion photography and for for our students basically when you think about all the different realms and the genres of photography you know there's magazines there's in studio there's runway and so runway is a whole nother dynamic and mm -hmm. like uh, just when i see this image of you it's so lori but <laughs> again, <laughs> Yeah, and even on the runway, when they're styling their images for their final collection, um, it's important for them to take that story and sh bring it straight through into their runway. And that's why I thought it was really relevant for you to talk a little bit about Chantel Thomas. Yeah, Chantel Thomas was really hot at the time. She was, um, you know, I, you know, I really don't know if she's um, as big as she was back in the '90s, but. In the 90s, she was um, a fashion designer, but paying close attention to her lingerie and intimate wear. So this particular show was really fun. She wanted it high energy. She wanted the models, you know, working together and flirting with each other. And our clothes were like, you know, half falling off where you could see the lingerie underneath. And that was her style. She wanted the models kind of... Um, you know, sweaty and like we we just partied. So before, after we did the makeup, I remember. And it now, you know, they gloss people over. But then in the nineties, this this was new. So they put them the makeup on, and then they had 
oil that they put all over our faces and it was a lot of oil i don't know if you can really see how much but it was we were looking very sweaty <laughs> and that's what she wanted and she um and all of the models you know we had a lot of fun it wasn't just that straight walking you know it was walking around each other being very flirtatious and it was a lot of fun a lot of fun so it's, it's super interesting because even on a runway, they can tell their story and they could really appeal to who it was like for this, this runway, they wanted that fast paced energy and smiles. But, you know, if, if uh, Car Uncle Carl was there with his, with his fan, yes, he certainly not. want that. <laughs> one, of, one of my first shows that I did um, at New York, uh, New York Fashion Week, uh, was um, with the designer, oh my goodness, uh, what is her name? She wears the slick back hair and the red lips. What is her name? Um, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Oh, I can't remember. Um, but it was straight walking. And even before, when we went on the runway, there were signs, no smiling, no turning, just straight. <laughs> but that was my first my that was my first fashion week and i was so excited that when i stepped out on the runway i couldn't help but smile that is totally me and i remember going out in this little skirt and i saw all the cameras and i just started turning and smiling just like that and um when i got back i got scolded you know they're like hey no no turning no smiling that was the <laughs> So, but look at how specific it is, right? Yeah, yeah, so, it's very specific. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really Carolina sure. Herrera. That's what I was saying. Carolina Herrera. That show. That's what. I was oh, talking. really? Yeah, that was no smiling. Okay. No smiling at that, she that, that vibe backstage, but that's super <laughs> interesting. So styling. Okay. So, so tell um, us a little bit about, I, I just love this shot of you on the right. And I feel like it really tells a story and it's really, you know, what we're trying to evoke in our photo shoot and how you came about with this. Right. So working with the stylist, sometimes the stylist really set the mood and that is who is giving the model you know, the direction most of the time on these shoots because um, they have pulled it together. They have thought it out. And this one on the right, you're talking about the one uh, where I have the um, Chinese cards in my mouth. This was a um, uh, an so Asian. Cocoa. What? It's so it cocoa to me. Yeah, it was, so, it was all, you know, 1920s hair, but it was also an Asian shoot. So we had a lot of references. Um, of those, I don't know what you call those cards that are that card game. Um, the card, it's a Tokyo card game. It's all spread out. It was in a restaurant. We were, you know, crossing bridges. Beautiful, beautiful shoot. But all kind of that whole influence came from the stylist that was uh, styling that. And it's beautiful, all the direction with the hair and the makeup and everything. And you become like an actress. You know, you, you know, you get into that mode. They give you the direction. And now just like photography, you know, a stylist will give me the direction or the designer will give me the direction and you go full force into it. And that was, you know, really cool. The other ones were the, the stylists and the fashion editors uh, for that. Don that was Donna magazine, the one in the center. Um, I can't really remember too much of that shoot, but I remember it was interesting. That was like six page uh, Donna spread. <laughs> so how do you, how would you connote the difference between a designer or a stylist and the photographer? Do you guys all work together? So I know that there's a lot of people that are watching today that are maybe interested in coming to our like fashion entrepreneurial program. They yeah. want to do more styling. They want to do more photography. They want to understand what it really calls for and how we wear all these different hats, because as you said, you starting as Chanel's fit model and then Galliano and working runways, doing magazines, you know, traveling Europe, this all trained you to really figure out 
what I needed for the camera. So how do you feel that styling and photographers, how do you work hand in hand? Um, well, the stylist is such an important element as a photographer. Um, it really, they just elevate your shoots. You know, the collaboration that you will have with a stylist is just so important because they're giving you their vision and you're going to execute it. So the more you work together, uh, it just could be executed so beautifully. Um, and there's so much that goes on to preparing for a shoot. And when you, you know, have a stylist, sometimes I'm not even, you know, I'm not given a stylist. Sometimes it's all laid on me. So that's why I say when I do have a team that I'm working with, it's beautiful because everyone's doing their job. And the vision of the stylist to get it all together, the outcome, um, they're telling me what it is, you know, showing me, you know, examples. And then it all just, you know, comes together, you know, and sometimes we're location scouting and, you know, pre-shooting the job. Uh, but it's, that's what I love the most. The whole process is, is what excites yeah. me, you know, even yeah. seeing the clothes, seeing the clothes and seeing the accessories. That's really super exciting. We're other working off of one another. Yeah. Right? So it, it's, it's still that same feeling of you being in the middle of the process of walking back and forth for John and his partner that is kind of pulled into the photo shoot and playing with the creativity. Um, I'm still admitting people uh, playing with that creativity in the shoots themselves. So when we talk about doing a photo shoot for our designers that are finishing in their certification program, it's, it's really that we're creating and we're aligning them with what they want their brand to portray within the photo, you know, right. and sometimes, you know, as young designers, they're going to be the stylist, they're going to be the photographer, they're going to be the photographer with their iPhone, because, you know, when I think back to us shooting in like 2003, that this iPhone is just as good as, you know, a, 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 one of the super cameras, one of the, you know, that, that we were shooting with then. So right, right now, they're, they're kind of like getting that feel of how can they create photo and video content? How can they create a collaboration with others and still like creatively lead in their own right, but work fully as a team? And, you know, what are the different aspects of the photo shoots that you do? So we wanted to show uh, just the diversity. So, yeah, there's runway, there's magazine, there's editorial, there's advertisements, but, you know, there's flat lays too. So can you talk a little bit about flat lays and how important right. they are? Yeah, so about? flat lays are, are really relevant and important right now. And that's where you're, you know, putting the colors and the texture and you know everything together and just if you're if you're selling you know a dress you know what goes with that dress like anything that's yummy and i was i was trying to get more flat lays that i did cuz i did a lot of flat lays for for magazines um uh, a couple of years ago and uh, we were doing children and we would add in the candy and we would add in the color pops and <laughs> we'd add in anything that was, you know, sand toys and stuff like that just for the, with the clothing and it just will come alive. So color, you know, even though this one is not an example of color, but it's a color, more of texture. So um, anything that will just bring that, you know, um, that collection or the fabrics or the the clothes alive through the flat lays. And I, I do like shooting flat lays. And it's not as fun. Oh my God, that's the worst for me, but. <laughs> I do. I mean, I mean, I take it easy when I do it flat lays. And, yeah, yeah, making yeah. it absolutely perfect and measuring, it is, it's tedious. Painful. It's tedious, but I like it. <laughs> I do like it. It's in the studio. Definitely important. Yes. So uh, we talked a little bit about this before everybody came on, but tell us a little bit about Carson just because I love him. Okay, Carson is awesome. 
Um, he's also a fashion lover, so I had a great time with yes. him. And we did that uh, particular cover in Pennsylvania in his country home. That like guy's country property has like a lot of acres and a lot of horses. And this was in the cornfields of his property, and so much fun. And actually, we went out um, when we we were shooting the whole day and then this was kind of the last shot. They're like, Oh, why don't you do something in the cornfield? So Carson and I went through the cornfields um, and it got a little scary because you can get lost <laughs> very quick, very quick. <laughs> so and then it's like, okay, which way out of here? But um, it was, it was really fun. And he's, you know, such a great guy, just what you would imagine, you know, what you see on television is the same person full of energy and just awesome that's so, great I and you did are. not style that last you didn't style that last shoot with me that was not you that um i think that was no but we had so many similar shots i was thinking of yeah, the it looked like a shot that we would have done together no we yeah. didn't <laughs> yeah um so when you're preparing for locations, I definitely want to talk a little bit about this. So when you're preparing for locations and we're really focused on those details, something that we talked about when we first came in, just like these, these walls that are super popular, like in LA and New York, like right. what happens like when they change the wall all of a sudden? I know, and they do. And so you better <laughs> location scout find the location and shoot the next day because in two days it could be gone. <laughs> yeah. Someone's coming and graffitiing. Right. But you know, um, knowing, um, I guess knowing what the clothes look like, or like I said, you know, working together with a stylist, you know, and knowing what the clothes look like so you can find those locations um, and know what time of day is the best time to shoot at those locations because you can get to those locations and they don't look like you, you know, they did in the morning, like, you know, especially that love wall. That's <laughs> a tricky right. wall and very popular. And sometimes these are, you know, taken up by other people shooting. Uh, so you have to get there at the right time. Um, and so that's, you know, pretty important. And, and the shadow, right? The light. Yeah, the shadow, the time of day you're going to shoot, uh, really important. And, you know, it's nice to do a pre shoot or just a location shoot. And, you know, have time for that to make sure that the clothes are going to work on those locations. For right. sure. Yeah. Um, Even though that New York shoot was very tricky because uh, that was the wrong time of day. It looks beautiful in that picture. But uh, that was tricky as a lot of post, you know. Uh, a lot of post production, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> So when you don't have that preparation and the planning, I think that the most successful shoots are those that are so planned because really when you say it's all in the details, you know, one little thing could change it because say the model, you know, we took an extra hour shooting at the location prior yeah. and then the models are paid by the hour. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I know that we'll have a lot of questions about that, about, uh, you know, how to do your first photo shoot and where to do it. And one of the biggest things that I think that I really wanted to talk about with the designers is, you know, focusing on the end use of what you want to get out of your shoot. And I would love for you to speak to this a little bit as a photographer oh. and your experience. Yeah. So the end result. So going back to using a stylist, <laughs> um, this is really important because the end result, you know, designers and companies, they want a lot of photos. And a lot of times they don't know what they want. They just want a lot. Um, and the in the end result, if you don't have enough for them to, to use, then you're really, you know, you're having the next job, it could be a little difficult. So, so when you have a stylist, they are kind of thinking about that end result where we're, I'm thinking about the location and the lighting and everything being perfect. The end result, leaving that up to the stylist or, you know, sometimes the designer, like I have to have I have to have horizontal shots. I have to have vertical shots. I need um, shots for social media. These are all different things. If we haven't discussed that in the beginning, your end result from your photo shoot can be lacking. 
And there where they're digging for photos, they're digging for photos. Do you have, you know, do you have that, you know, slider shot for me? And I'm like, no, we didn't discuss it. So working together with your designer, with your stylist, what is your end result? What do you need? Those holiday shots, you put that there, which is so important. They don't know that they need it, but when it comes down, when they're digging through all those images and they like have nothing to show, like, oh, I don't have anything to show for holiday. Oh, I don't have anything I can um, crop down to a perfect square. You know, those are really important things to discuss before. What do you want your outcome to be? You know, so working as a team, you have to always think like you're going to need more than you even think that you need these days because of social media, because of your website, because of any kind of branding you need those close-ups you can't forget anything so that that happens all the time to me with the companies that i shoot for right and i think I mean, that a lot of designers don't realize that oh i you know i i'm maybe with like mono chic we're advertising watches but you know you want to get that beautiful shot of the full outfit but if you don't take it in the horizontal format it is very, exactly. very difficult to do it in post, correct? It really is, yes, um, it is. To get that whole movement and um, just the whole action and crop it down. So this happened actually back in December where um, we talked over, we talked over everything in our shoot and um, they didn't have a stylist, but the designer was the stylist. So she was on, on shoot, we had a shot list but they didn't think about the horizontal layout. And so after when I delivered, they're like, can these shots be switched horizontal? And I go, yeah, but you're gonna lose all the whole fashion. <laughs> they right. can't really, it really depends on what you're shooting, right? Yeah, I was shooting in pretty tight, kind of what they wanted, but they didn't realize it. So it was kind of um, for them, it wasn't the best shoot that they had. So now going forward, we're, we're, I'm going to shoot them again. So these are things that we're going to address. So that this is easily overlooked. And now with um, with so many images that you're going to need, you can't overlook these details. You're going to need to shoot a lot and specify what you're shooting for, what media right. you're shooting so for. Think things that you tapped on that's key here is that yes not only are you going to be using it for perhaps web and social but then you want this to last because a shoot right now I mean we could do it on the fly we could do it on the cheap with other students and use our internal networks but it's still going to cost and so you don't want it to cost you twice so proper planning going in is super important and knowing that hey, in just two months, it's going to be fall. So I want to have a fall shot. I want to have yeah, a sale absolutely. shot. Yeah, I absolutely. want to have a Christmas shot. And even though, so for it, like we just using this as an example. So our colors were very specific on this shot, right? Yeah. But at the same time, we shot so many bright reds and vibrant so that we could pull in, you know, uh, oh, Valentine's Day. Day. <laughs> you know, we could pull in Christmas or what, what have you because you know, that's super important for them to really understand as they're shooting, like, where are you going to use these? When are you going to use these? And how can you make it last? As a young designer, you know, doing a photo shoot, what kind of equipment can they start out with? What What do you suggest that they do for their first, for their first shoot? So say their first shoot, their main shoot is going to be coming with you. They're still going to do that same pre-production for every single job that they're going to do. And I try to get this through with my students that 20 years ago when I was graduating college, we're still doing the same thing we do now. We start with our color story. We start with who we're targeting. And then we're creating a shoot that's going to develop all around that, that original inspiration. So what would you suggest for a first shoot if they don't, if they're not able to work with a professional photographer yet? Well, um, I think that what we even did with our, our you know, shoot with uh, Monarch Chic was we all had cameras. <laughs> we did all have, we all had our phones and 
This was amazing for the behind the scenes. Of course, people want to see behind the scenes shots. But we also did a lot of um, just kind of setups where the watches were laying on the table and they look gorgeous. Like, oh, let's put a flower next to it. Let's uh, put a lamp next to it shoot it with our phone, more content, more content, you know, oh, the shoe, the shoe is the right color that's matching the dress. It fit like, oh, here's the fabric with the shoe. Let's just shoot that more of the feel of the colors and the concept you can bring in without just showing the model. So it just stretches out. The whole brand is coming together when you even mm -hmm. shoot the colors and shoot the um, the clothes in the elements, or even you know laying um, laying the gown or laying the dress on a bed. That's just having um, with the colors that are relevant or the textures that are looking great together. There you go. You're just still pulling in the brand. So when they're doing a shoot, don't um, overlook those um, possible shots. And they can take these, like I said, on their cell phones. They could take these on their cell phones as well as just um, as you know, having a professional photographer. But you need uh, just a lot of images. So um, and bringing in that brand, bringing in the whole concept of what you want. So it's very important to think of the outcome and the whole concept when you're doing that first shoot, which a lot of people don't, they just want to, the designers just want to see their stuff like on a, on a person, on a, you know, on a model. It's very exciting, but you can't forget. It's just, okay. The model's just one aspect, but right. accessories are important. The shoes are important. The background the is important. The background's important. The hair is important. It's all important. What do you want? So it's the like? team. It's it is and and I said this. I think that it's it's super relevant in the sense that everybody is shooting with their iPhones and everybody is in the background. And really, when we look at social media, I know that um, I have some questions that are coming in right now. When we have social media, we want to see that behind the scenes. I think it really helps us connect to the brand and connect to the designer or whatever it is that we're shooting, when we have that behind the scenes, when we have the feeling that went into it and we have that understanding. Yeah. And people yeah. want to know, people want to know about the designer. They want to know, you know, why would I like this designer? Like, you know, what, what went into making this outfit or dress I love, you know, they love that. They right. love that. So you have to show it, you know. Okay, and if you had to give one kernel of hope for someone that has never really taken an image with their phone before and they have a new design and they wanna put it out there and they wanna style it appropriately, what kind of advice would you give to them? Wow, um, this famous photographer always told me, you want a good picture? Want a good picture? Put it next to something pretty. <laughs> Simple as that, <laughs> you know, you want a picture of a pretty model, put it next to something pretty, take the picture and you're going to get a pretty picture. But, um, you know, put some thought into it. But uh, definitely, you know, if you want your clothes to look beautiful, you know, put it just next to something that you like, you know, that you like, that you find pretty, you know, and um, or put it on someone or something that you find pretty you know, anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's you. So I want to open it up and I have some questions from Edwin. Okay. Um, so his first question, Edwin Reyes is what is your advice in taking product photos versus lifestyle photos for content? Product photos versus lifestyle photos. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the product photos you can take, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to answer this correctly or, you know, helpful. Um, you know, I like taking product in environments, you know, not just in the studio. I love being in the studio, but sometimes it um, relates better to the person um, buying the product if they see it, like say it's a... Um, a product like a beauty product sometimes it's wonderful to take it in the bathroom you know take it you know next to a comb or just set up something in the bathroom uh, could be awesome take it where where you'd use it instead of just in a studio 
Right. And, and when you do take it in the studio, it's nice to play with that and say, if you do have, you know, a white background or a background and you want it to pop, um, sometimes not just using flat light, but, you know, using a spotlight on it to make it pop, make it come alive is also something I'm really loving right now. Um, yeah, I feel like they need the product shot, but lifestyle is where it's at. And that's like the, really in the environment, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. loving right now, and that's what people are very receptive to right now. So mm -hmm. definitely, I, I do feel like Edwin, you do need mm -hmm. that product shot somehow. You need just the, you know, just like what we talked about. Like you definitely need the front, the side, the back view. Okay, but other than that, right on plain white. Other than that, really the dress, just like what you did with Galliano and Chanel and all the other people that you were fit modeling for, they want to see the movement. And I think that video and something that we haven't really tapped on, but I know you do do video as well. And we did it as a team. Mm -hmm. Video is super crucial because it is showing that movement, especially for clothing. It's right? coming live right now. That's just so important you know, that it's just not flat, that it's coming alive, that people are seeing the clothing, the product in the element and seeing it move, seeing how it works and people love that. So this is so important. Yeah. So yeah, so both, Edwin. <laughs> <laughs> right. So definitely think about the, the lifestyle aspect because you wanna really show what the lifestyle of your customer is. You right. know, and and show where your customer would be wearing that evening gown to or listen, commit to your customer that they're wearing that evening gown if they're, you know, vacuuming during COVID, I, you know, so whatever it is, whatever style that you want to put out there, commit, commit and then detail it and show yeah. it and put it next to something pretty. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Okay, next question. What is your advice, Lori, in taking uh, the best angles to capture when shooting a piece? When shooting a piece. Okay. I think, well, you know, when you're shooting, you have to take all angles. You're not going to know until you, you know, you just keep on shooting. And um, unexpected angles are sometimes the best. Right. You know, so not just, you know, straight on sometimes from a completely different aspect. And I know when I'm going into a studio shot, when I'm going into, you know, into a studio shot using a model, I walk around the model and the dress or the outfit so I can find that angle if it's up shooting up or if it's shooting down that's why um i spend that uh i spend maybe about 20 eh, not 20 minutes about 10 minutes just randomly shooting not really focused on you know anything but just trying to find the angle that i like even though we have a shot list of what we're supposed to do i like to see i like to look from an angle of looking up an angle looking down and from the side where is it going to work for me and where am I going to like find that angle? Sometimes I'm shooting on location and I'm shooting away and the stylist like you, Don, could be right on the other side going, wait a minute, something's happening over here on this angle. Mm -hmm. And you have to pay attention to that and like, oh man, I'm missing that. So it's a good idea before your shoot. You know, when, when everything's ready to be shot, look at it from all different angles and you really won't miss a great shot. I right. Think. And so then let's take it back again, back to the fitting, right? Mm -hmm. So here they are designers and you could be a stylist without being a designer, but really what, what, what would you say relevant wise, what do, do they need to have design experience for them to be a good stylist? You've worked with many stylists. That is a, such a good question because I would like my stylist to have a fashion background and to be a designer. You will have a different eye. My favorite, you know, stylists have always had that background. They're stylists now that just jump in it, you know, from 
just, you know, styling a few things. Oh, I'm a stylist. I love fashion, but they don't have any background in it. And, you know, sometimes it's okay, but I, I want to, I want to know that my stylist, you know, has some type of history that knows designers and knows, you know, the history um, of, you know, the making of a dress or knows like, you know, fashion history from the 20s and the 30s and the 40s and the influence and where all these influences came from. Because I know. Right. <laughs> and that's what makes you a better photographer with your yeah. background. With and, your fashion and, background. And it's so exciting. So yeah, when you see these things pop into the trend, the latest trend, where did it come from though? You know, someone did it before. Now what's coming back? And it's exciting, you know, like, so uh, it's nice, you know, it is nice. And some of the designers that I work with that are stylists now that come on my shoot and they're stylists, um, they're lacking just sometimes because they have worked on that collection for so long that they, you know, they're just seeing the dress. They're just seeing the, you know, the pant and they just can't go beyond like, you know, all the accessories needed or all the elements needed to make that outfit shine. So sometimes they're limited um, when they're just the, you know, just the designer. Right? Yeah. So, so it's really great. I think that it's similar in being a designer as in being a stylist, because as designers, they don't necessarily have to be the best dressmaker, but they have to have a point of view. And, you know, it's, it's the same when you, when you look at it and you look at a team and really for them to be able to have that point of view and for them to be able to express it and work with the photographer and really understand how to get those angles. I think that having the background and the construction background, which I think is super relevant. And that's why in our entrepreneurial program for fashion styling and photography, it is, it is extremely important that they get that sewing background and they really understand how a garment should fit so that they're better and they're quicker. Like how many times have we been on a set that we have to shoot 60 pieces in a right. day and we gotta get front, back, side, and they want us to be creative. Like, right. all that in there. I you want know? a fashion look, but I want front, side, and back. You know, <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Yeah, of 64 pieces, no problem. <laughs> They're like super people. But right. if, they don't, if they don't have that background, and, and that's what I really want them to understand coming into the program or once they're leaving the program because they don't have to be the best seamstress necessarily but they have to understand and they have to have that basic construction skills and they have to have a developed eye in that this sense so that they can work quickly because i think that one of the beautiful things about being part of a team is that when we get on there we do all have our own point of view we're all artists in our own right and we have to follow the brief but then we get that experience that when all of these creative people come together, we develop art, right? right. You know, it's, it's so exciting. So, yeah, this is, it's really this is what I love. I mean, this is totally what I love. And um, for a stylist, like when you're when you're shooting the shot and it's all like, oh, this is so beautiful, the stylist will go, you know what? this little object needs to be added into our shot. And then it's like, oh, that's exactly what it needed. Or something. <laughs> you don't even think it could be any better. And they're like, no, wait a minute. <laughs> and it's just that trained eye. And you just like, it's so creative. And it just, um, it, it excites me. This is, you know, what I love. You know, oh, I would never have thought of that. Yes. You know, Coco, that I was, I, when I started my career um, or in photography, I was working with Coco, who was a stylist. She was my stylist, but she had the background of a fashion designer. That's what she actually wanted to be. But she, you know, started doing styling. And um, I started with my studio in Glendale, you know, California. And we were shooting models for Ford and Elite. And we were just, you know, just shooting models like uh, test shots and stuff like that. But Coco right. was literally designing and uh, making dresses right there in my studio. I like, wish I had a piece to show of Coco. Oh, my gosh. These little that. things would fall apart in five minutes. But they were amazing. And we're like, put this on. Oh, my gosh. And then she had her little pocket of tricks. Like, she had 
newspapers and stuff that she was adding on to the shoot. And it was just like, this was the most creative stuff that I was doing. It wasn't for magazines, but we were banging out these shoots that were amazing at the end of the day. Oh my God. We were just like, this was amazing. And that's how Coco became her, uh, Coco click, the designer in the nineties. She was huge. She was in uh, teen Vogue and everything. But uh, before that we were shooting together as just a little team. In a warehouse in Glendale. <laughs> that's how it works, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's so okay. amazing. I love the process. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about it. Right. So, even though you're a photo, even though you're a photo, what are the best ways to get into an editorial shoot? So even though you're a photographer, what are the best ways to get into an editorial shoot? So I think that as a designer, from a design perspective, how can they get their pieces editorial, right? That's what they want. That is, so I think that a lot of the students that are watching today, and, right. uh, you know, they really want to, they want to get their piece out there. Right. So what's your suggestion as a photographer? Like, do you, you know, have designers that come to you? Well, yeah, I mean, designers come to me a lot, you know, new designers come to me a lot to, you know, shoot their things, but, um, you know, getting an editorial, I, you know, there's, you know, PR people that you just, you know, send your clothing to and things like that. And just like, you know, Coco becoming this, you know, designer in the nineties, um, she was super fabulous, but she was a stylist and making clothes on the set. And I brought her in to see a sales rep that took her to another level. Our shots that we had from those models, you know, with these little cute little tops on, um, they looked at those and they're like, this is awesome. You should design a collection. And in months, that collection was in uh, Fred Siegel at the time and Nordstrom. Wow. So, you know, it's all like your passion. I mean, it was all like just a fluke that that happened, but it was just playing around with the photos and being creative and being around photo shoots. And honestly, she was just doing it on the spot. So I'm not really sure if I'm answering her question, but um, you know, there's so many different ways to get it out there, but you just have to get the right images and, you know, and produce the right stuff and the passion and people will find you people, good people yeah, will social. Find you. I feel like social is such a way to go because it you really can be shooting your own editorial. So editorials for those that don't really understand what an editorial shoot is, it's, it's a story, right? So it's a highly stylized photo shoot that you can do with your friends and your iPhone and start there, right. put it on your social, get it out there. Um, you know, ask for, you know, if you see models on the street, if you see models that, you know, some of the, the students that are here can model yes. your business for you and you just join as a team. And just like Lori is saying that, you know, here she was in a warehouse in Glendale, right? And then, you know, then she went to Europe and she was Chanel right. fit model. So, <laughs> you know, there you have to really go, you have to have the vision. Yeah. Honestly, you know, when I was, I dreamt of working with Chanel. Honestly, uh, it, as a teenager, you could see magazines spread all over my bedroom. That was the dream. That was the vision. You right. know, I was, you know, eating, dreaming, you know, dreaming. You were manifesting. I was manifesting. Absolutely. <laughs> I manifested it. Yeah. And it's yeah. funny. You don't realize that you manifest it, but you totally, that's where I want it to be, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. I absolutely believe that. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I think practice. So do we have um, any other questions that I, I'm getting them in my text, but if, if anybody has any questions out there, we have Lori for another seven minutes. Anybody have any questions? You can put them in the chat or just take your unmute yourself. And if you wanted to ask a question. Nothing. You see, you're so thorough. You have a question? I'm so <laughs> Why? Yeah, they're not they're not coming through the chat. If anybody has any questions, you can put them in the chat. I see your Okay. Well, you're so thorough. You answered everything. Did I? I hope I did. I hope um, I did. So what I do want to tell everybody is that in September, 
we are starting our entrepreneurial program that has more about our fashion styling and photography. Um, I did oh, something. I something how to approach a photographer for a styled shoot? How should uh, a student approach a photographer or a young designer approach a photographer for a styled shoot? Yeah, um, well, it's uh, pretty easy. Uh, you know, just kind of asking them, see if they shoot fashion. There's a lot of photographers out there, you know, so make sure it's a photographer that already shoots fashion because they're going to have the eye, you know, and have your vision already, you know, have, you know, something like this is my vision. This is my outcome, because a lot of photographers without their team, they don't have any idea, you know, and, and you they don't necessarily have the vision, right? Right. You might not like what comes out, but if you show them a, some type of example and they shoot fashion, you know, you'll get that. You'll get those beautiful shots. So slip into their DM, people. Yeah. Slip into the DMs, uh, you know, show them what it is that you want to. And that's literally what we do on the, on the shot. So whether you're the creative director or the stylist, or the designer, you're really saying, this is what I want. This is my this end is vision. Result. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and, and it's okay if you don't, if you didn't make that original vision. So right. you want to go and, you know, it used to be that I used to be tearing magazines, right? But that right. is no more. You don't have to do that anymore. Now you can screenshot everything. So screenshot the feel and the look and the style that you want behind your shoot. And then start approaching people that are doing exactly what it is you want to do right i see them what is the best rate also what is the best rate to get an understanding of the different photography rates in new york hmm. um how to find uh you know let's see there's such a wide range of rates um basically I guess you can go, uh, phew, that's a tricky like a day. A day or not, like a half day cost worth of time. Yeah, so uh, we're getting, what would what would a day rate be for a New York, LA photographer? Like what's an average day rate? Well, uh, on the lower end of a day rate would be 1500. And okay. then a higher rate could be like 2500, 3000. You know, you might get, um, you might get photographers that would do it for less, but I'm not sure, you know, uh, starting out photographers. Now I have to say, you know, when I was, you know, starting out as a model, starting out as a photographer, I collaborated with new and starting out people too, you know, right. and you have to surround yourself with the young models, you know, with the young photographers, everybody starting out because you're growing together, you know, right. may not, you shouldn't maybe go to, you know, a high end photographer just to, you know, get that picture, start out with, you know, someone new, it's exciting, you know, build your team. These build are the people that, you know, don't just think about one shoot, you're going to need a lot of shoots, you know, start off with someone that you like and someone that's new too and gets you and collaborates well with you that's what you have to be that's how that's who you should surround yourself with talented people you know mm -hmm. that's why as a model i was always hanging around designers like at wee hours in the morning they wouldn't, couldn't get rid of me they were finished but we would just <laughs> hang out and yeah shoot me laying around you know shoot me all the time. it was always like they couldn't get rid of me those were the people now that i still work with <laughs> right. And those are the people that are going to keep getting work. And I think that yeah, that's we still grew, we grew together. Yeah. You don't want you don't want to be on a shoot and put that much into it and then be surrounded and not feel good about it. So you want to feel the energy of that collaboration. And I really think that's key right now. Right. Um, what should be your message and selling point to approach them for for a collaboration? Any tips or advice uh, that's known in the industry? For collaboration? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that excitement is really when someone brings me something new, um, just like collaborating with, you know, Barbara. <laughs> yes. 
uh, last week she was like, okay, we're going to do, uh, we want to shoot film again. That was all she had to say. Barbara, we're shooting film. I'm all over it. I am like so excited. So get, if you're going to collaborate with someone and get excited about, you know, something new, get excited about what you're, what you're selling. And that will get the photographer, that will get the stylist on board, that will get people on board. You wouldn't believe, you know. Right. Um, uh, so just just loving what you do, believing in what you do, and uh, just having a full like vision will get people excited and they'll want to jump on board. I'm all for like if something's something's new and exciting uh, and it just rubs me the right way, I'm I'm ready, I'm on it. Right. So uh, just so right now in the industry and we just tapped on it, what is one of the new and exciting things that is happening in photography right now? Is going back to film, which is so freaking excited. amazing. You know, Vogue is going back to film. Tons of um, designers in Paris are shooting film now on their collections. It just looks modern and it's exciting. It's soft. It's slightly blurry, and uh, it's beautiful. And that's how I started, and that is so exciting for me to start doing that again. It's yeah, and I think an important advice to these young designers is it doesn't have to be perfect. And that is why that grainy, that very, very stylized, grainy photography, original look is back in right now. Because as we see, you know, Gen Z, they're really not interested necessarily. The younger people are not interested in perfected brands. They want to see real images, real people. The style, yeah. And, and they want to really feel the style that you're creating. So I think I had a Vogue back there that was all in film. It was like, what? Oh my God. And it looked so good. Right. Like, really. Uh, so that kind of stuff excites me. You know, yeah. Bring them something that is exciting and you will get a whole bunch of people jumping right on it. Right. So when you're collaborating, really find the people when you're developing your team, find the people that are interested in the same aspects that you are. And maybe it's a very simple, you know, simple geometrics. You will see it on their social, you know, really research. And that's one of the biggest things prior to the shoot. So we shot for a week, right, in L.A. We, the week before or the three days before were just as much of a shoot as the actual shoot itself, right? Absolutely. Whoa. Yeah. We spent days pulling and going to locations. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And being super organized and really understanding what it is you want out of what you're shooting. What okay. we did in a day was like unheard of because of that planning. Well, yeah. was really, I haven't not, I don't think I've ever done anything like that. <laughs> we did it a full eight hours, like what most people would do in a whole week shoot, like yeah. in three days, yeah. because it was so carefully planned out. Amazingness of it, yes, yeah. yeah. So, really, details people that's what photo styling is all about, that's what photography is about developing your eye, creating your personal style, creating your brand, and starting with those simple, simple elements that you're learning in the foundation. You are going to use them not only throughout your certification but throughout the rest of your life. You will still build off of those same foundational courses that we're going over throughout your life and throughout your career. And you know, you could see that through Lori's career, whether it was in Paris or Germany or Japan or here, yeah. she's still doing the same thing. And it's all about creating a vision and executing it and carefully planning the details. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, thank you so much, Lori, for thank being Thank you. Started. I'm excited for you guys. I'm excited for all the designers. It's so exciting. This uh, The fashion industry is awesome and so creative. And I'll so always vast. Be, Yeah, it's so vast. Yeah, a lot of models that I know, you know, went on to stay in the industry and became photographers, makeup artists, stylists. Like, so, yeah. You know, um, it's super exciting career. So I hope the best for everybody and just keep on creating. 
Really? Thank you so much. We hope to see you back for our entrepreneurial program. Yeah, and I love it. <laughs> everybody, um, I will put it in the chat. Oh, wait, one last question. What's the best way for a stylist to build an image or put themselves out there if they can't afford a major shoot to build their portfolio or use social media often? Or uh, you don't use social media? That's kind of so. tricky. <laughs> I said start. Start using yeah. social media. Social yeah. Media is free. Okay. Right. So, um, but the best way um, to build you know, an image or put themselves out there if they can't afford a major shoot, that would be the social media aspect, right? If they can't afford a major shoot. Right. And you have your iPhone. You can do beautiful pictures and you can find, you know, your friends, your relatives, your, you know, um, other, you know, other designers to, you know, put clothes on or dress up yourself. You know, some of these stylists I see that I follow, they are putting outfits on during COVID. They're putting the outfits on and styling themselves and taking pictures. You know, <laughs> that was, and if you have the fear of social media, like me personally, I don't like to put my personal image on my social or in my other people's, but find a muse maybe it's your sister maybe it's your best friend maybe it's your little brother that you know i used to i used to like dress up my brother when i was little you know poor yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know um there's so many different ways you don't have to be in front of the camera if you don't feel comfortable but what you do do is have to have a point of view you have to tell your story or the flat lays you know mm -hmm. just like getting good with doing those flat lays Oh my gosh, yes, because that is a career in and of itself. Product right, it and flat lays is a very, very serious career. And you could be consistently working and have your own studio space right in the middle of your studio apartment in Brooklyn. Yeah. You and know? That's, that's very creative and it mm -hmm. takes a lot of patience. Yeah, that's 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 a good way, flat lays. Yeah, yeah, I really like that. If you have the fear of being in front of the camera, you don't really connect with someone right now, start with the product itself and really focus on the flat lay because that is a career in and of itself. And usually any good stylist starts by doing product and flat lay shots. And if you could get good at that, you'll be able to train your eye to really understand the lighting at anything. Right. Yeah. Say and that? Color, texture, everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Texture is huge for products. Um, yeah, I feel like uh, AA, thank you for your questions. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, if anybody's interested, definitely email us. I will put myself and Dominique in the chat. Um, Lori will definitely be back in the fall for our entrepreneurial program. And if you're interested in fashion styling in our, entre in our entrepreneurial program, we have a new section starting September 20th. Uh, in three months, you will get the foundational skills you need to actually start working. That's what we're here for. At EDU. Dominique, you can put your, your uh, email in the chat. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, if there's any questions afterwards, please guys reach out. Uh, there will be, this was recorded, so I'm excited. We're going to splice up, splice it up and put it out there for you. And um, thank you, Lori, again. Thank you um, so much. Thank you. This was fun. This was a lot of fun. Uh, one really quick good. question. Any uh -huh. tips to understand lighting? Oh, uh, uh, any tips understanding lighting? Hmm. Let's see, what, what can I give you as a quick tip? Uh, well, right now, um, which is easy because a lot of people are using the LED lights, you know, it makes it easy. Uh, stationary lights, you know, back in my studio here, you know, the strobe lights, kind of, you know, fun to use. You have mono lights that are easy to start off with, you know, where they just uh, click off one time, you don't have a battery pack, but these kind of LED lights here, little stationary lights really good you know good for product you know you can use that but you know just starting off with you know simple simple light 
you can do things with one light and a and a you know whiteboard. It's amazing what you can do with one light. Right. If you saw that that picture that we did of the you know whiteboards, foam core, you could get it at the dollar store. Um, yeah, that was all foam core. Yeah, yes, dollar store. store. Oh, that's actually dollar store foam core. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah. and I say I say forget lighting at the beginning. Go outside. Just yeah. take the pictures outside natural and use light. natural light and really develop your eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so natural light. Where the sun is at different points of the day, and then how you want to get that feel out of your shot. But at home, you could take those little, you know, I, I once had this book clamp light from Walmart right um that like clamps like the side of your bed like if you want to read at night and yeah. i would take that and use that as a spotlight on things right you know and well just, you could you put know. like a little chiffon over that and it makes a, a soft box kind of like what i have back there right yes yes and you can rent right so um b and j uh you could rent photography yeah, my, i forgot the rental in new york this is a great a uh, lens and repro if that's still uh -huh. there big rental yep. and uh -huh. there's one a set shop rent on 21st so there's lots of places that you could rent from um but i would really master outdoors you know if yeah if you natural have, yeah natural yeah. light first and then and then just play play yeah. with play with any light you have and and those ring lights i think that beauty lights are like amazing i don't have one on here and i have yeah, but that's a nice even light, kind of like these, you know, LED lights that I have, just a nice even light that it makes. So that is really good. Okay. A small investment on that. Yeah. And how much would an LED light like that cost? Oh, those ring lights are really inexpensive right now. These uh, the, these run, you know, the you can get the high end and the low end being like, you know, 60 bucks to 600 bucks. <laughs> Yeah, but I think definitely under a hundred dollars, and the ring lights could definitely be under fifty. Yeah, I think maybe starting with that would be really good because it's nice and even, especially for product. Yeah, really good. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you everybody for being here and taking the time. Please follow our, our free webinar series. We do these every month, and I can't wait to see you guys next month. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. L Studio Makeovers. I'm going to put that on there, right? That's your site, Lori. Yeah. L Studio Makeovers. Yay. <laughs> all right. We'll see you all soon. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. Thanks, Thanks so much. Time. Thank okay. you. Bye. Bye.